appreciate the I tell you what I've been uh, over the last several weeks I've been to uh, more churches than I usually don't get to other churches and uh, I, I certainly appreciate our praise band a great deal I go to other churches and I think oh, I really want to go back to Wesley you know, I, I just we're gonna give uh, Joel and and everybody just such a big hand because that's a that's a hand for Jesus not a not not because they perform but because they're sensitive uh, some of that is just being sensitive to how we present God's spirit um, out loud to everybody. and I know that they they work and they struggle hard with that hey I'm gonna invite the kids up I'm gonna go ahead and invite the kids up um, we, we have a little bit of feedback today don't we Rob hmm. you don't know why is that my microphone oh okay let me let me put it a little closer how about that how's that that gonna work better Okay. Okay. Hey, I want to invite kids up. Can I have kids up here? Any kids? Can I help me help me out with this? You're the only. You're the only one today. I'm, I'm glad you're here, Jackie. Can you hold this for me? Hey, hey, look what look what we've look what I've got here. Anybody know what what this is? What tool toolbox toolbox? Yeah, tools toolbox. Do you know what any of these tools? Do you know what this this tool is? Hammer, hammer, hammer is a great tool, isn't it? What do, you, what do you do with a hammer? What, what, what do you do with a hammer? hammer nails down. You can hammer nails down. If you get really mad and are tired of working on whatever area, you can just hit it with a hammer, right? Does that ever work very well? No, it doesn't, yeah. And you can also take them out. Yeah, you can also pull out nails. So this is kind of a miniature hammer. I kind of like this hammer. It's a little miniature hammer. It's hard, hard to hurt yourself. How about, how about this? You know what this is? Screwdriver. screwdriver, screwdriver. Do you know what kind of screwdriver that is? Phillips, I call it a plus screwdriver because it's easier for me to remember the plus screwdriver. And then because the other screwdriver is a what? A minus screwdriver, right? Plus and a minus. That way you've got a positive. For this is for positive screws and the other one's for negative screws. So that's, that's just, uh, oh, anyway, that's my, own little, that's my own little system. Don might take it and make it a screwdriver collection series. You have to go to work camp to understand that. <clears throat> so anyway, oh, we got something else in here. How about how about this? You know what this is? Pliers, pliers. You guys are so good. Pliers, pliers are good for everything. Pliers are good. If you don't have a hammer, you can hit the nail with the pliers. What? You can pull out teeth. You can pull out teeth. Excellent, excellent. You never know when you're on a job site and you get a toothache. What? You can pull out. You can pull out. You can yeah. pull out staples and nails. Yeah, it, it is. The pliers are, are very, And one, one more thing. I have it. How about this? A level. A level is good. It shows you if things are straight and everything like that. And you can play with it, just trying to keep it level the whole time. See how long you can keep it level. You can see if somebody's level. You're, you're, you're a little off. You're a bubble off. The bubble off. You, you're a good kid, though. Hey, there are a lot. This, these are tools, and we went to work camp, and we used all sorts of tools like this. We used tools. We used bigger ones, and uh, and we 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 had tools to work and to do things. But for faith, sometimes we use tools like this to do things for other people. But it, but we're given a faith toolbox too. And what do you think some of the tools are in our faith toolbox? Yeah. Love. That's a great, big high five. That was a good one. That's a good one. Love, our love and grace. What are some of the other tools we use? That's good. How about like the Bible? That's a tool in our toolbox, isn't it? It tells us about faith, is it? That's right. That's a, that's a tool. And, and there's one big one that we like to talk about all the time. Starts with P-R and ends in A-Y. Pray. pray. We like to pray. That's one of our main tools in the faith toolbox. Hey, at 618 every day, we ask people to pray. We ask people to read this verse from Ephesians. This is from Ephesians. What do you think? Ephesians 618. That's why we came up with 618. How about that? And so we're going to read this together and then we're going to pray. How about that? Let's read this. Everybody here, let's read this together. Would you pray hard and long? Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Now let's pray. God, we are thankful for Wesley Church, and I'm thankful for these, uh, these children and young ones and, and the adults and the, 
and the old people even. I'm thankful for us all as we come together to worship you. I pray your blessing upon them and upon us as a church that we can find ways of growing in your love and grace that we can use the tools you give us every day through your son Jesus Christ and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Hey, if you go to the back, back there, Stella brought candy. It's her birthday. Uh, tomorrow. That's what I meant. Tomorrow's her birthday. I don't know. I, w I went into the hospital a day earlier. <clears throat> Stella. Anyway, <laughs> tomorrow's her birthday. And she brought got a pinata when we were down in Texas. Because we were at a place that was making that that where they were and actually hand crafting pinatas, and you haven't hit it yet, right? You broke it during Sunday school. Okay, <laughs> I missed it. There's something uh, I don't know. There's something therapeutic about on your birthday or so celebration to take a stick and hit something until it is broken. <laughs> I just uh, anyway they did it anyway uh, where was I we were in, we are in, we are talking about prayer for this year and I will say we're starting a new series next week um, uh, Shel Silverstein and all of his books and we're gonna we're gonna do some Shel Silverstein stuff and that'll be fun as as we learn about the gospel we're still gonna be based in the Bible but we're gonna we're gonna bounce out of Shel Silverstein just a little bit as have that just like just like I am in I am. Uh, winding up the series on the Sacred Echo uh, by Margaret Feinberg, and and this one is, is really the idea that that prayer is a communication we have with God, but it's also a communication God has with us, and we we get that communication by the sacred echoes in uh, that that go through time and in our lives and in our spaces. Those sacred echoes that come back to us, and every once in a while, every once in a while. We stop and we can celebrate it. Every once in a while we can stop and kind of look and see what God's doing around us and just, and just celebrate it just a, a little bit. Just like, just like Stella's birthday, we'll celebrate tomorrow. But I'm pretty sure she was born today. <clears throat> Must have gotten it wrong. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, we're well, we're doing the sacred echo as we're going. I, as as you notice, we went to work, went to work camp. We went down to San Marcos, Texas, a long way away. I will say, um, I, I appreciate Penny who directed it from a distance. It was it was one of those weird years. One of those you're going to hear more about it later from the kids and probably get a real perspective. I'm I give you the adult perspective here. I give you the preacher's perspective, which is a little bit skewed a lot. Uh, it, it's a little further than we normally would like to have gone, but uh, uh, one of the things that Wesley has done, uh, we, Wesley has a long, long tradition of doing work camps. Now, I, I will say that, that this, is a, this, is a, uh, this says something about this church. It's a hardcore church because uh, a number of years ago, we, we softened this up in a lot of places and we did mission trips. But Wesley still does the work camp. I mean, we, we want you to know that this is not, and usually it's something that we've, we've gone out, you know, you, you need to find the hardest project anywhere in the United States. It's almost impossible to do, and we're the group that goes and does it. That's, that's usually, usually the way we've kind of defined what we've done. And, and, and not, only that, not only that, we've taken the, the responsibility. We understand that, that sense of making, the, our, our mission statement is making disciples, uh, making new disciples for Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world. So you don't, it's not just about our group that for ever since I've been here and probably before then, we've gone, the Wesley, the Wesley group has partnered with another church that maybe, and, and most of the time that's a church that hasn't ever done a mission trip before and we've partnered, in another, and, and for the last three years we've partnered with Faith Bridge as, as they've tried to build up their group uh, and Abby Pepper, who's been a member here for a long time and grew up in this church, she's now the youth, direct, youth and children's director at Faith Bridge and so, uh, so we went there. And, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, you know, sometimes when, when you have those other people, you think, well, maybe we'll let them take a little more responsibility. So, so uh, w we were kind of strategic in this, and we thought, we'll let them figure out where we're going and what we're doing. Or actually, we worked together, without, and then they could do most of the work. <laughs> that was the plan. Well, uh, their pastor, Buck Cooney-Smith, 
was he was he he really had some ideas and he was all gung ho about it. We're I'm pretty sure he knew he was gonna be at one of those Methodist moved churches right in the middle of this, but he never said anything to us. So he didn't go. He said, go to San Marcos, do all this, and then he didn't go. But we, we, we're, we're pros here. We've got, we've got people like Steve and, and Don, and, uh, and we've, got, we've got great people, and great, great people go. And, and, we, and, and I tell you what, we had Penny. And I will say this, anything, anything that's rippled or anything like that, we have Penny. That's usually, that's, what, that's usually what we fall back on. Penny's going to be there. And so we, we, we were not worried about that at all. Unfortunately, Keith needed Penny more than we did. Uh, that was a, th this was the one thing. And, and, and I will say, God, God, God works in mysterious ways. You know, you get everything planned and you're going everything like this. And, and, then, so, and then Penny's husband, Keith, you know, had, and we were, that was bad that he had the accident and everything. But it was then, then we're like, well, how can you go for away for a week when your husband has had a farm accident and needs help? And she goes, uh, she can't. And so that's the way God got us to pray the hardest is that we're like, oh no, okay, well, but Penny, Penny actually had set everything up ahead of time. She still worked from here. Fortunately, we had, she has an iPhone and Abby did a great job and and we have had, like say, we had Steve and everybody else. And so it was a, it was a, it was a great trip. But, but that's kind of how God sets things up, isn't it? Is it, is it everything is set up and you think you got it? And then it, hmm, the, you get a little trip. And sometimes that little trip can really mess you up a little bit. I, I, I've, I've, say I've been, with, been going to other churches for, I've had a chance to go to other churches for a few weeks and and, or listen to other preachers, and I'm always like, when's the preacher going to start talking about the Bible? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said amen back here. Did I hear that? <laughs> well, uh, and, and that's what, uh, how does this deal with the Bible? Well, we have four Gospels, and uh, today we have four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are synoptic Gospels, so I made them the same color. John's kind of a little bit different, and today we're going to be talking about uh, a story out of Mark. Mark Mark is probably the earliest of the Gospels written. It's shortest, it's the shortest, um, but, but what's interesting, the re one reason they think it's the earliest is because even though it's the shortest gospel, each of the stories are written, they're just not written as well. They're written in a longer form, and, the, and, and Matthew and Luke probably had those, and, and they edited them down just a little bit. You know, you rarely copy something and make it worse. You copy it and you make it better. And so Mark was probably laid out first, um, with only 16 chapters, so it's shorter. A lot of people find Mark their favorite because it's the shortest, and you can you can sit down in an in an afternoon and a couple hours, you know, kind of knock uh, read the whole Gospel of Mark without any trouble. It's like I say, it's a little choppy as it goes, and so if when you have 16 chapters, when you you know you're halfway through at chapter eight. Oh, you guys it first, took first service three times before they got that. Uh, um, you, you chat so much better. Maybe you guys are just more awake. Uh, chapter eight, you're about halfway through chapter eight. And, and, and so in chapter eight, chapter eight's kind of the pinnacle of Mark in a lot of ways. It, it, it builds up to this feeding of the 5,000 when Jesus is preaching and there are 5,000 people, 5,000 just men listening to him. And then, and the people are hungry and the disciples say, well, we got to send these people away to get food. And Jesus says, no, you feed them. And there's all this dialogue going on. And, and, and in a miraculous way with just um, uh, with just a, a couple of loaves and a few fish, Jesus feeds 5,000 people. And then, and then immediately in Mark, right there in that 8th chapter, immediately he wants to pack a lot into this 8th chapter. You get the confession of Peter where, where Jesus says, well, who do these people say that I am? They're all like, how do we feed 5,000? Jesus says, well, who do people say that I am? And Peter says, well, you are the Christ. You are the, uh, he makes this confession that we can call, call the confession of Peter. And on that, then, then Jesus is saying, it's on this rock I will build my church. You, you probably heard that uh, about how, how it, that succession of Peter in terms of, of the church and what, what goes on in, in, in the midst of it. And that's really, really held up, particularly in the Roman Catholic Church, is the, the, the church of Peter. But what's interesting is just a few verses after that, then Jesus says, after that confession, he says, on this rock I'm going to build a church. He says, but it's going to be hard. And, and the Son of Man must have to suffer many things, and he's going to go to Jerusalem and be crucified. And that's where Peter goes, well, wait a minute, Jesus. 
we can do this another way. Maybe we should do, maybe we could, and, and Peter's kind of hedging back in the midst of it. You know, he's all committed, and now he's kind of hedging back and like, that doesn't sound like quite the plan I had. And then you have that, that really terse and that, 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 that tough, really rebuke, rebuke of Peter. Right after he's the rock he's going to build it on, Jesus turns around to him and says, Get behind me, Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Right there, Peter wants to take a shortcut, and Jesus says, We're not taking any shortcuts here. That's kind of how work camp works too. Sometimes we feel like we want to take a few shortcuts someplace, and uh, you know, when you're when you're laying things, I, I will say that 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 we we have some OCD people who go and we want to do things right. Uh, um, um, Steve has never gone on a work camp that he didn't find an impossible thing to do and not have to accomplish it by the end of the week. He uh, he, the, the the house we were working on had a broken foundation had a broken foundation, and the, the people, we, we were assigned a, uh, a, a kind of a contractor who went with us to kind of advise us, and he's, he was like, well, there's, we're going to have to get some, a professional or something. He wasn't sure what to do, and, and, and Steve, Steve and, and about everybody there, we all stood and we looked at it, and we put our hands in our pockets and jingled our change and, uh, and kibitzed and everything, but Steve is the one who crawled underneath the house and and ordered the materials, and on the last day, they got the they got the the jack to jack up the house to put it all back together, so that the house would there wasn't a, where it wasn't a gaping hole in the side of the house where the foundation had had fallen down. Steve's one, and and where where you know if if you're like me, I'm like, well, maybe we could just patch that. <clears throat> And Jesus said, "Not patch it. Get behind me, Satan. We got to get. We got to do this right. We got to do this right." And 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 that leads right to that call to discipleship. That sense that, that, when, uh, that, that one of the things that we know is that when we follow Jesus, that, that everything, that, that our life's going to come into line, but that, that we're going to be attacked and that all sorts of things aren't going to go right. And that those difficulties are, is that call to discipleship, that sense of we, the, that the, the way is straight and it's narrow. So it's easy for us to get off the path. And then, then we... we we go immediately into chapter 9, so, so you kind of go between 8 and 9, the, the middle of the book, uh, middle, of, middle of John, or middle of Mark, and, and right there at, at chapter 9, Jesus and his three kind of inner circle, Peter, uh, James, and John, go up on the mountain, and you have the transfiguration where Jesus is, is met there by Moses and Elijah, and they say, well, and, he, and he's kind of glowing. It's this really kind of amazing thing. The transfiguration is an amazing time when we see it's a long section in Mark, which is unusual, as, he, as he's really explaining this sense of God, of God and Jesus being one. And here, once again, you hear you hear God's voice in this part. Uh, God speaks in this part of the gospel, where He says, "This is my beloved Son." Now, what's interesting is is when you do work. Like I say, we had a contractor doing that. Now, now, now we've done a couple of days worth of we've done a couple of days worth of work, and they they were starting to deliver other things. And and one of the things they delivered was a screen door. And I thought, well, I could put a screen door on. That's that that should. I've gone through screen doors. I've seen screen doors. I'm pretty sure I can do a screen door. So I thought uh, with, with uh, we a couple of us kind of grabbed onto that, and he said, "Well, you just put that on," and we took it to the front door. Now, one of the things that happens, one of the things that happens is just like with Jesus. Jesus was up on the mountain, and the disciples are left down here to kind of go work. And in the same sense, <coughs> the contractor's there, and he could tell you what to do. But then he left with me with the screen doors. Now, the last thing he said to me was, there are instructions in the box, read them. Now, come on. Who's going to read instructions? Now, maybe if they're pictures, I might look at them a little bit. But, I mean, who needs instructions? The first thing we did was we took the screen door out, and, and I noticed that the door itself was smaller than the screen door. So I knew there was no way to get that to work in that. That we had done done that something else had gone wrong before, and that that's not that's not unusual. Something else had gone wrong, and so it took me a whole day just to kind of scratch my head and to figure out what was going right and what was going wrong. And you kind of ask, and 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 I and I got to tell you, I was just a little obsessed. I want the door to close right when I'm done. So uh, and, and and he was and and. 
and Jake is a nice guy and everything, but he was like, well, don't worry about it. I'll just put it on later or something like that. I said, oh, no, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get I'm going to figure this out. I'm going to figure this out. And, and of course, I, I got I got with Steve and and uh, and Don and we sat there and we put our hands in our pockets and we jingled our change and, uh, you know, maybe maybe twiddled around our things. And as we talked about what we were going to do and how how to get this project done. And we had some kids there. And so I worked two days on putting the screen door in. <clears throat> I, we, 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 we put it up, we took it down, we put it up, we took it down, we put it up. I put a part of it, and then I took it down, put up another part of it, took it down. I saw if it would close, if it didn't close. and then, uh, Oh, we worked two days on this screen door. That's kind of what the disciples were doing. Jesus is up there on the mountain with, the, with, with, with Peter, James, and John, and they're working. They're working. They're people. They're, they've just fed 5,000. They're people who come in with miracles. They're working and everything. But when they come down from the mountain, when they came down to the disciples, they saw a great crowd around the disciples. I thought, oh man, they've gathered a bunch of people. But it says, but it says, read the underlined portion here with me, would you, friend? It says, some scribes were arguing with them. Some scribes arguing with them. There's some scribes there arguing with them with them. Things didn't go quite right there. That's the part we didn't read ahead of time. Is that there's some scribes and, and Jesus is like, what's going on here? I leave for just a few minutes and everything kind of falls apart. Everything kind of goes awry, if you will. And they're like, well, there's this, there's this kid, and uh, this guy comes up and says, they couldn't heal my child. And the scribes are over there saying, well, you see, I told you these guys couldn't heal anybody. And, and there are some other people say, and you can see this kind of this argument brewing in the midst of it. And Jesus answered them, you faithless generation, how much longer must I be among you? How much longer must I put up with you? Bring him to me. That's the statement. That's why we do mission trip, trip is to bring people to God. Now, and I could I could go on and talk about it and justify, it, but 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 this is the this is it's bring bringing people to God, and that's our that's our theme in the Sacred Echo today. And so, with that, I want to talk about three ways we bring people to God's healing love. And, and, and the, there's a, there's some controversy in the midst of this because we know people who are sick. Maybe some of us have been sick, and we don't feel like God has healed us and touched us, and we get a little bit embarrassed about bringing that up to other people because sometimes it doesn't work the way we want it. But, but there's, here's, a, here's a truth. Here's the truth I'm going to tell you. Jesus Christ healed a lot of people in the Bible. He healed a lot of people in the Bible. But that healing was temporary because there's not a single person who is alive in the Bible who's alive today that, that, that in terms of physically alive on this earth. But one of the things that we know is that, that God's eternal love, that love that, that, that ushers us into eternity, lasts forever. And that that's our real goal. Is, is that, and sometimes that God gives us miracles here on this earth, and we can talk about why and how and where, but sometimes God gives us those miracles, and we just celebrate whatever God's doing in our midst. But the biggest miracle is bringing people to God, into a relationship with God. So we, we start that, first of all, by, by understanding our need. You see, it's not about us. It's not about what we do. It's about what God does. And that, that, that we need to get out of the way. And that's the first things he's t telling the disciples. That, that you guys went off to do this just so you could show how powerful you were. When really it's about how powerful God is. And then in the midst, there, there's, this, there's this discussion with the the, the man and his son and what's going on with him and everything. But, but, and, and, he's, and he's writhing. And, and there's that great verse where it says, uh, where, the, where the, the, the man says, uh, I believe, help my unbelief. And that, that great confession that we, we all have that's right here in this part. But, but, but here's, the part, here's the part I really like. It says, but Jesus took, him by the, took this child by the hand. He's writhing and everything like that. And he takes him by the hand and he lifts him up, and the child's able to stand. That, that just the touch of Jesus has made the difference right there. That they understand that, that it's the touch of God that heals people. Whether, whether physically or not, certainly spiritually it heals people. It brings people back to God. And, and we, we, we rest and we trust in God's healing power physically. But, but we understand 
that that's only temporary in this world and only something that glor- used to glorify God, but that, that eternally God brings us into a perfect relationship with Him. And so we bring people to God too, secondly, by responding with compassion as Christ did, by bringing people closer, if you will, in, in relationship with God, not by something that's remote or something we do, not by some automatic thing, but it's about, it's about a relationship between us and God. And, and, and I like this, and this ought to be highlighted and starred on the side. It gets to the end, you get this whole complicated story, and we can get all mixed up in all sorts of things. Uh, but, but the point, he said, the point is, right here in, in 929, he said to him, and, and read those those. Those words of Jesus right there. Jesus says to them, what? This kind can come out only through prayer. Only through what? Prayer. That's right. Only by our connection with God. That's the one echo that goes through time over and over and over again in our lives. It's only when we devote ourselves to a relationship with God, a relationship that's so deep that it's even a walking prayer, that things truly make a difference, that we truly experience that healing power of God, that we truly experience what it means to be in, in, in God's kingdom and building God's kingdom here on earth. So the third thing is we bring people to God's healing by, our, by understanding our need, our true need, and by understanding, by responding with compassion and by joining together with God we're, not, we're joining not with each other, but with God, with God in prayer, friends. That's what's so important. That's what prayer pushes us to and focuses us on, is, is being one of God's people. That's, that's that sacred echo of God asking them to bring them to me. Now, I will say that, that um, our contractor, our contractor Jake, he kept... He kept coming. I was working on the front door, so everybody's going through. They could see what was going on as we put the door on, took the door off, put the door on, took the door off. But I wanted the door to close. I mean, not just close. You know how you know how a screen door is supposed, a good screen door is supposed to work. Can can it, I mean, I hear it in my, I hear it even talking to you. It, you should you should be able to open up and then you let go of it and it kind of goes, open it up and then and then click. That's what you should it should it should. I, I wanted so much for that to happen. I kept taking it apart and putting it back together and taking it apart and putting it back together. And finally, finally, I could hear it. Whoosh, click. <clears throat> oh, oh, that was music to my ears. I don't know. And I said, every time that owner goes out, they'll know God's love and they won't be frustrated by the devil because their screen door won't work. <clears throat> that, would be, that would be a terrible tragedy. For friends, I'm going to invite the praise band back up. And I don't know what it is that frustrates you in your life, where you feel like you're spinning your wheels or, or you, you think you're doing God's work and it just it doesn't work out. I don't know where it is where you've got, where you need to, need to experience God healing and, and graceful love and and you just don't don't you just feel like you're stuck in the middle of it. I don't know where it is, but I invite you to offer that up to God in prayer. Um, we have a prayer list that's printed there. I do want to ask you to to say a special prayer for John Kerr. I appreciate him preaching for me last week. Evidently, he's been diagnosed with Rocky Mountain spot, spotted fever this week. So I don't know who gave him a tick when he was here, but um, uh, somebody did. Uh, Anyway, he, we want to keep John in our, in our prayers. Uh, I invite you, and then after the prayer time, the praise band will play a song, and then I'll be over here for anointing with oil uh, for those who'd like special prayer. I invite you to turn with me as we go to God with prayer, in prayer. Oh God, we are so thankful for the, for the summer heat and the sunshine, which tests us, but produces the, the growth of, of vegetables in the garden that, that, that makes it clear enough so that we can, we can work outside and paint the house and that, may, that gives us the ability uh, 
to show and share your love with others. We come this morning knowing that we haven't always been great examples for you. At times we fall short of your love and your glory. We come this morning confessing our sins, knowing that you're a loving, gracious God who loves us just exactly where we are and who we are. God, we, we give our sins to you, knowing that you forgive them and restore us to new life and new hope. We come with our own needs and our own difficulties. God, some of us have needs for healing. Sometimes those healings are physical. Sometimes they're about relationships. Sometimes, sometimes they're about finances. Sometimes they're about neighbors or jobs or whatever. We give them to you, God and your loving God who cares for us. We pray for those who are, are in groups that are going on mission trips and church camps and various activities through this summer. We pray that people might experience and feel your love and your grace in their lives, that they might be, uh, be called your people, and they might grow to be disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, and the hope you give us. We always give thanks for those who keep us safe on the roads, whether they be policemen or highway patrolmen, people who work in the highway department. We give thanks for those who keep us safe in society, whether they be people who work in emergency rooms or fire departments or correctional institutions. We give thanks for people who keep us safe in, this, in our country. We pray for those in our military, whether they be training or um, whether they be at uh, regular duty or whether they be in war zones. God, keep us all safe. We pray that our actions might reflect your justice. They might lead to peace, that we all might sit at the table of hope. God, we give ourselves to the task of making disciples of your Son, Jesus Christ, for the transformation of the world, as we pray the prayer that your Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.